Hi everyone, welcome back to Life Tips by Ning. Today's video is about how to find out your favorable versus unfavorable energy or elements in your positive chart. And why does that matter? Because the favorable versus unfavorable element um, over each year or over every 10 year of your life path will give you a really quick macro level of your life trend and track. Um, so before I um, talk about the how to come up with that this, the uh, conclusion, right? It starts with the relationship amongst the five elements. So last episode, I was talking about there are five elements and there's yin and yang of each one, but um, they have the main supporting versus suppressing relationship. So that's the two keywords here, support, suppress. So look at the outside of circle, wood grows fire. Um, that's pretty easy based on nature. And fire grows earth. This one is a little abstract. Think about um, farmers, sometimes they will set up a burn fire over a farmland because uh, after the fire dies down, it increases the nutrition of the, the, the earth before they plant. Um, grains in there. So fire will grow earth and support earth. Earth supports metal. Think about it like um, in a big earthy mountain, what can you find in there? Typically the uh, minerals and precious stones are found within earth. So earth grows and supports metal. And metal supports water. So think about like most of the big rivers come from um, the big mountain neck like in China, think about the Changjiang and Yellow River, they all come from Himalaya mountain, um, the whole mountain range. So mountain has metal, right? So metal uh, grows water, that's the birthplace of water. And another way to think about this is when you melt metal, it becomes in a liquid form. So that's a water as well. And the water grows wood is fairly straightforward. So that's kind of the supporting relationship amongst the five elements. And inside of the circle, that's a suppressing relationship. So wood suppresses earth because it sucks up all the nu nutrition from the earth away. So in a way, it's not supporting it, it's suppressing and reducing it. Same thing with fire and metal, right? Fire will, will burn and hurt the metal energy, so it's suppressing it. Earth suppresses water. So think about the big river flooding. What do you use to control the, the flood? It's typically building up the dam with dirt material. And then metal suppresses wood. So you use metal to trim and cut plants or trees. Um, and then last but not least, water suppresses fire. That's fairly straightforward. So that's kind of an overview of the supporting versus suppressing energy and the relationship amongst the five elements. But before I move on with a real life case study, I want to point out a very uh, fascinating point of the, um, the suppressing energy because that's tied back to the I Ching uh, principle of balanced state versus over too extreme state. So most of the time, right, for this example, metal will cut and suppress wood. But what if the wood chi is so strong, it might actually dull the metal cutting it versus the other way around. So in certain extreme circumstances, when the chi is so unbalanced, wood could actually suppress metal as well. So this could go both ways. But in, I would say normal circumstances is metal suppress wood. But in a rare extreme chi unbalanced situation, wood could suppress metal as well. So that's the fascinating point of learning this Chinese culture. It's not like a, just a one-on-one -on -one relationship. It has so many different nuanced toned um, approach to analyze the situation. Anyways, so another quick example is, um, let's say um, water and fire, right? Most of the case, water will suppress fire. But what if the fire is so big and the water is so small? Then the fire will suppress water. So that's kind of the, the three different um, dynamics amongst the five elements. So now I'm going to use a case study to explain 
look in your Bazi chart, how do you find out what which element is good for me versus bad for me, right? And but before I dive into the case, I got this example from a ancient Bazi book. So just to provide people, uh, protect people's privacy, um, I'm really just against sharing real person's buzz on the channel without their permission, right? Because that has, if you're good at it, you can translate it into their um, birth, actual birth time. But the, all those examples in the book are like from people lived a thousand or two thousand years ago, so they're not here anymore <laughs> with us. Um, so here's one example. Um, a good revisit of the last video's content. So here are the eight characters from your Chinese calendar birth time. Here's a translation of what those Chinese things mean, right? So the year is a young water and young earth. The birth month was a young water and a young wood. The birth day is a young wood and a young wood. And the hour is a young meadow and a young fire. Because as I was saying last time, the yin and yang from the earthly branches follow the yin and yang nature of the heavenly stance. So this particular example, this person has all four pillars of yang energy. But um, my quick and dirty way of showing how the math works is um, if you derive this example into this abstract format, right? How many, what's the weighting of each of those eight letters? So three is, as I said last time, that means you, that represents yourself. So, so this person is a young wood person. And then the month, um, earthly branch, that one, because that was a Jupiter influence I was talking about last time, has the most influence on the person's chi and energy. So that one is worth 40 points. The rest of the um, six characters are worth 10 points each. So you add everything up, that should be like 100 points influence on you. So if you look at this person, the young wood, that's a focal point. What's the energy that's the same to wood? Myself, right? Uh, if you add this up quickly, how many are young wood? So excluding yourself as a wood, you have those two. And as I said, because this is the Jupiter monthly energy, that's worth 40 points. And this one is worth 10. So I added 50 points for the same to me energy, which is wood here. And then wood grow fire. So what's the energy that I support? So you look through this chart, you have one. And because of the position, you have 10 points for fire. Same thing for, for earth, fire grows earth and supports earth. So you have one earth here, so that's 10 points. And earth supports and grows metal, right? Earth and metal relationship. And you have 10 points for metal. Last but not least, metal grows water. And you have um, two waters here, so that's 20 points. So that's a quick and dirty way to highlight the composition of the five elements for this person's bazi. Um, you see those arrows I drew here? What does that mean? This is kind of a preview of the 10 spirit theory I'm going to talk about in the next video. But the two energies that's either same as me or supports me, that increases myself. Makes sense, right? And the three other energy that either I support, I grow, that would take away energy from me. So it re reduces wood's energy. Wood suppresses earth. So I need to suck up the nutrition from the earth. And in the meantime, it takes my own wood energy to take that action. So the end result is a reduction of the wood, chi and energy. Last but not least, metal, because I was saying earlier, metal cuts wood. So it's an energy that's suppressing myself. So that's the metal is reducing the wood energy. So all of those up and down errors are showing you for, for each of the other four elements, is it increasing myself or decreasing myself? So in this example, the two increasing energy is combined as 
if you add it up with 70 points, that's way out of balance. 70 out of 100 is quite um, strong. Strong not necessarily means it's a good bazi, right? We're talking about the middle way, the balanced approach. So how do you make it more balanced? There are three candidates for your favorable element, the, the black reducing energies. Now the question is, which of the black one is the best, uh, the most impactful? In this particular case, because of the wood is so strong with a good supporting energy, if you choose to say, hey, my answer number one is metal, is metal, the question is, is metal strong enough to reduce it versus the, the other way around, the wood chi is so strong, it might actually over suppress the metal energy. So in that, because of that rationale, metal is not the number one candidate. Um, actually, the best one is fire for this buzz case, because naturally wood grows and supports fire. So it's a very natural and organic way to reduce the wood energy to make it in a balanced state versus going against it in a very like headstrong, aggressive way. This is more go with the flow, go with nature naturally, reduce the energy um, to make it in a more balanced state. So if you ask me to rank the conclusion of what's the favorable element for this bazi, the answer is number one, fire. This bazi loves fire. Number two, earth. Earth is gonna reduce its energy and both of the earth and fire paired together is gonna make this into a more balanced state. The third, I would say a neutral element would be metal because not only it's not strong enough to reduce it, but also it grows water, which in another way grows wood, which is not the direction we're trying to shoot for. That's a neutral one. Um, the unfavorable will be water and wood because if you come more of that every year, every 10 years, that will make you even stronger. That's the wrong place we're trying to be at. So that's kind of the quick and dirty way to say, how do I come up with the favorable versus unfavorable five elements for a particular Bazi chart. Um, so what is the real life ap application for that? You're like, so what? I know I like fire. What does that really mean for me? Here is the other concept of Bazi, which is um, the Dasha, similar to the Vedic astrology's concept of Dasha. So each person's, because of their birth time, every 10 years, there's a change of external environment influence to your original bazu so it can be flowing and now stagnant for this particular person's case the, this age will be different for each bazu it's not like for everybody it's from age 5 to 15 every 10 years 15 to 25 right there's a specific calculation on when which age you'll start but it's typically around age 10 you have to have um like a every 10 year cycle to see the external environment influence on your own bazi. So for this person, as I was saying earlier, he likes fire first, earth second, um, metal is kind of neutral and wood and water are bad for it. It does, does have enough, he doesn't need more. So if you analyze the 10 year trend of his life, from age five to 15, you have the water and wood, young energy, right? And then age 15 to 25 is the young uh, wood and earth energy. So I, I wrote down all the translation for each of his 10 year trend. So then the next step is to pick out which is good, which is bad. If you look at it, starting with the second half of this age, this is the fire, right? This whole 35 to 45 years old, that's a fire energy. And then the first half of 45 to 55 years old, that's a fire energy. So what's my conclusion here? At that overall general moment of his life, he's gonna have supporting energy to make him in a balanced way. And in that real example, it translated into this person because 
wood um, grows and supports fire. Fire represents um, like your own creativity, uh, doing your own business uh, rather than the suppressing energy. It's like working for a corporation or government, right? Following other people's set of rules. Because wood grows fire, fire represents um, your own business, your own creation, um, very eloquent and speaking well. So in this person's real life, he actually ended up ditching becoming like a um, government worker by going through the Koji system, like which is the, the study system. And he ended up studying his own business and made a lot of money during that moment, those time frame in his life. But then when he's in his younger years, this is what oh, water and wood, which I said is not the favorable. So this wouldn't be as ideal of just non-ideal just means like when you try really hard, it just always feel like something is going against you. It's not as smooth and easy. It does not necessarily mean you won't be successful. It's just not as easy to get to a to your dream state. So if so look at this, right? For this particular person's puzzle, you, you can draw the overall macro conclusion that when he was younger, he's probably not as good of a childhood. And then during the middle age, starting with 30, his business started to take off. And then it lasted until probably age 50-ish. And then it moved into a more like material and um, a wealth state versus in the end, he has more some suppressing restrictive mental state and brain chemistry. So that's a quick and dirty way to analyze a person's um, overall life trend. But again, today's video is a very, I call it a fast food approach to analyze this. But once I go into details of sharing what goes into uh, either, uh, each earthly branches, there's a very scientific and accurate way to analyze the percentage of each element on a person's buzzer chart is very detailed versus the 10 points, 40 point system I, share, uh, system I share today, right? So then you can have more finite um, conclusions based on that more accurate prediction. But that is the same, it's the same concept that I showed you today. And then other than every 10 years, every year you have a combination of those influencing you every month there's a um, calendar right and every day there's a calendar so you just add more layers and layers to your color scheme so you have a foundation color this um, dasha every 10 years it give you a different tone you know painting and every year it give you another little addition of the coloring system and that creates your own unique picture for you as a person but um, before I wrap up today's video, I just want to elevate a message to um, the book Dao De Jing, so Taoism by Lao Tzu. There's a concept called the act of non-doing in that book. I really think this is a good proven um, theory behind that non-doing concept. Non-doing, the act of non-doing doesn't mean you just totally believe your life is sad and don't do nothing about it that is the wrong way to interpret it i still believe that we as humans we have our willpower to control our life so even though you might be in the unfavorable stage of your life by your strong willpower you can still overcome so that's the the point of um the beauty of being a person, right? But then the other side of the concept of non-doing is in order to be so for successful, you should follow the nature, right? What the, your life pattern is supposed to be. The whole point is like, if you understand your strength and do the most effort during the most favorable time of your life, you just increase your chance of success so much better and know what your strengths are. Like if this person keep on starting to be a government worker, that's going against what his faith is showing him the best way. 
So the act of not doing is not about not doing anything and just like too bad, I have a bad fate. This is the wrong moment. It's about understanding your strengths and following the law of nature so that you're not working against it. To me, that's my personal interpretation of that whole Dao De Jing's um, theory behind it. It's very fascinating. But I look forward to um, sharing more of the, the 10 spirit in the next video, which is a more, you kind of use 10 person's name, right? To signify um, and simplify the, the suppressing versus supporting relationship amongst the five elements, and then dive deeper into this buzz analysis. Thank you for watching. Bye.